Let's see what's going on today. Oh. Oh. What's going on, everybody? Hold on. Let me get this message out. All right. There you go. Cool. Well, I think we're going to be getting into some reactions today. What do you guys say? Yeah. Cool. Let's see. What are we going to react to? Oh. Oh, look who it is. You can't treat your wife like you treat your kids. All your right. wife is your peer. She is your equal. Uh, God told Adam equal. it's not good to be alone. You need help. She's going to help you. The two of you need to be one. So it's plural leadership. That's why the Bible says that children should honor and obey their mother and their father. Why? Because they're both leaders. So mm. mom and dad are the leaders of the family. The father, the husband, he is mm -hmm. the head of the family. This doesn't mean that he's the bully. This doesn't mean that he's domineering, overbearing. It doesn't mean that he gets to boss everybody around. It doesn't mean that he gets to be a control freak. What it means is he's supposed to treat his family the way Jesus treats his wow. church. He's supposed what? to lead with love, humility, sacrifice, considering what? the well-being of others. And it should mm -hmm. be that when your kids look at their father and your wife looks at her husband, they say, I see a reflection of Jesus in that guy. You know, I got to give it to Mark. But Mark does a really good job at pandering, really pandering. Do you know how many things he took out of context in there? Let, let's start from the beginning, shall we? You can't treat your wife like you treat your kids. No your wife is your peer. She is your equal. Got a problem with that. Got a problem with that right there. Where does it say in the Bible that they're equal? Mark, let's go back to Genesis. Let's go back to creation. Genesis 2, right? Got the Bible right here. We're doing the Bible study. In Genesis 2, verse 7, we see that God made Adam. Then the Lord God formed the man from of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Then we see God places Adam in the garden. In verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. Verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now the ground of the Lord had formed every beast of the field, every bird in the, of the heavens and brought them to the man, Adam, to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all the livestock to the birds of the heaven to every beast of the field but for adam there was not a it was not found a helper fit for him so the lord caused him to fall into a deep sleep and while he was asleep took one of his ribs and closed it up and placed uh, it placed with flesh and the rib that the lord had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man and the man said at last bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because he, she was taken out of man therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh and the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed so let's start right there we'll stop right there one, they're not equal. As we can see, Adam has authority to name it. Adam named woman, not Eve. Eve didn't come with a name. Adam named, wait, not only did he name her once, but he named her twice. Later on, after the fall, chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 20, it says the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So did Eve, did she name herself? No. Did she have any authority to name Adam? No. Did she name anything? No. Who had the authority in the relationship? Adam does. How are they equal? Well, they're not. Oh, but wait a minute. We got to go back a little bit more. Genesis 3, 16. After God found out that Adam and Eve uh, had eaten the fruit and got pissed. He's real pissed. Um, he says to the woman, he said, I surely will multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. Wait a minute. If they're equal, how is he ruling over anybody? How does he have authority over her if they're equal, Mark? It doesn't make sense. So that's one error. Moving on. God told Adam, it's not good to be alone. You need help. She's going to help you. The two of you need to be one. So it's plural leadership. Oh, That's why the that Bible says too. that children should honor and obey their mother and their father. Why? Because they're both leaders. Let me um go to Ephesians. I like this part. I just wish like Mark would just like be honest for a second here. Ephesians 5, 15, all the way to like 6, 5. We see that there are three contrasts. 
three commands and three contexts. All right. Let me explain this. Cause this is where he's like to say this, you know, so moms and dads are equal. Let's go. Well, that's in verse six, one it says children, obey your parents in the, as, in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother for this is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and you may live long in the land. So we're good there. We see that, yeah, kids are supposed to obey their parent. There's a hierarchy of authority. They are equal there, right? <laughs> Watch what he didn't say. Chapter five, verse 522. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body is its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so do the wives submit to their husbands in everything. How is that equal leadership? How are they both leaders? There's not equal leadership. He is above her. Both of them are above the kids. That's called a hierarchy. It's like the military. Because actually in verse 521, the word here for submitting is the Greek word for submission. It's a military term that means from the top down. When you submit in the military, for those that don't know, you don't get to tell the general to shut up. The general gives you an order and you execute that order. That's top down submission. That's what he's talking about here. So in 522, he's giving us an example of what does that look like? What does this top-down mutually submission look like? First example is wives submitting to your husbands. In 6.1, he gives us another example. Children obey your parents. Oh, and in 6.5, he gives us another example. Bond servants obey your earthly masters. So he's misleading here. So mom and dad are the leaders of the family. The father, the husband, he is the head of the family. This doesn't mean well, that he's, he's the that right. bully. This doesn't mean that ah. he's domineering, overbearing. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that he gets to boss everybody around. It doesn't mean that he gets to be a control freak. I love that. I love that. Did you guys see what he just did right there? All right. So what he just did was it's a false dichotomy. All right. So basically what he's doing is it's a false choice that's presented. So it's either domineering or serving your wife. It's either control freak or serving your wife. Basically saying that you either are domineering and controlling everybody and dictating, or you could just be serving your wife. He says that he goes from self-pleasing to serving your wife's interests. So, you know, this sounds really familiar because Russell Moore spoke similarly like this. I believe he said, headship is not about having one's laundry washed or one's meals cooked or one's sexual drives met, but rather about the constantly evaluating how to step up and first serve and lay one's life down for one's own family. There's again, this false choice between naked selfishness and sacrificing for your wife and children. See, now there's actually many possible other choices available but they don't give you that. They only give you the extremes. It's either you're a selfish prick or you are a perfect servant leader. Let's look at Tim Keller. He's the one that planted that New York church, Redeemer Presbyterian. His wife did not want him. They did not want to go to New York to plant a church. Actually, she was very much against it. Well, he did it anyways. He wasn't serving his wife, right? His wife was not happy, but they did it anyways. And they end up using that example as a testimony in their marriage. So what he just did, he's equating the male definition of manhood, right? By equating a man's mission with serving his wife and kids, that's his mission. And that's not his mission. That is not a man's mission. A man's mission is not serving his wife and kids. His man's mission is doing what the Lord has given him to do. The problem with a lot of this is, is that evangelicals like right here, Mark Driscoll, in these teachings, like they, they make it to a man has no legitimate claim of his own that he could assert. Like there's no legitimate desire. There's no aspirations he could hold. No mission in the world that, you know, to undertake. It's it's literally basically saying, hey, you're a slave to your wife. Hmm. Now, how does this leadership that they have is executed? Well, according to Mark Driscoll, because he just pointed out, it's not doing this, it's doing this. So anything that your wife disagrees with, that comes across to her at least as you're being a selfish prick. How do you determine whether it's serving your wife correctly or, you know, you're being a dick? Hmm? Because the way that Mark just laid it out here, it's either you're a control freak or you're serving your wife. Let's let him continue. What it means is he's supposed to treat his family the way Jesus treats his church. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to lead with love, humility, sacrifice, mm -hmm. considering the well-being of others. And mm -hmm. it should be that when your kids look at their father and your wife looks at her husband, they say, I see a reflection of Jesus in that guy. So what basically he just did is that Jesus apparently to his wife and kids is a doormat um, because they don't talk about how Jesus didn't allow the disciples to di dictate what Jesus did. Jesus came on a purpose. He had a mission. And there's times where Peter twice told Jesus something and Jesus corrected him very quickly. We do see Jesus correcting the behavior of people several times. That's loving too, right? 
but nobody is referring to Jesus as a dictator, a tyrant, but Jesus didn't do what they wanted. He did what they needed. So if we're looking at Jesus as a role model to model after, we do see Jesus correcting his wife, the church not being equal to Jesus at all. So Mark, please stop pandering to women. Like we get it. You like to yell at men. You like to, how dare you? Well, look at bud how dare you like how dare you give in and pander to these women seriously i'm not saying everything that you said in there was wrong I'm not saying that at all there was a lot of good truth in there but the fact that you mixed it with so much bs it made it all spoiled nah it's better just to toss it get rid of it and start from scratch so how about you redo your video before i call you out again